Hey YouTubers, I thought I'd make a little video. I was out here messing around with this 4.8 LS motor I have for my turbo build. Uh, as usual, I forgot to start a video or make a video before I started pulling parts off. Uh, basically, I was to the point where I was going to order a set of valve springs for this and realized that I don't own a uh, LS valve spring compressing tool because I want one of those trick flow style compressors that uh, does two springs at one time. I wanted to pull the coil packs and valve at least one valve cover off this thing so I could finalize my measurements to make my valve spring compressing tool. One thing that I did notice on this motor, maybe you guys will recognize them. Oh, it's too dark. But these are those round body, high, what they call the hotter coils. They have like a little heat sink. Let's see if you can see it over here in the light a little bit better. But they have those little heat sinks on top of them in the uh, round bodies. Apparently online, I was looking them up and those are considered the hotter coil for the LS motors of this generator, or Gen 3. So I got lucky on that one, but sorry if I didn't make the video a little sooner. But this, uh, all I've done so far is uh, pulled those coil packs off and I was getting ready to uh, pull one of these valve covers off so I can get some measurements. And then, uh, oh, I was going to show everybody the 110,000, 18 miles. And this is a truck, 4.8 liter LS. Uh, eight, I think it's got 862. I want to say they were, I almost want to say they were 862 heads on it, which, uh, of course, I'll port those before they go back on the motor. But this is going to be my own personal low dollar LS build. I'm going to run an 01 to 03 LQ4 6 liter cam. That is only, I think, factory either 467, 467 lift on the intake, 479 on the exhaust. I am debating at this point whether I'm going to run a stronger seat pressured beehive spring or just go ahead and step up to a dual spring because I've heard a lot of positive reports online that talking about beehive springs can break and if you have a dual spring set up you at least don't drop a valve into the motor and you know valves generally don't hit the pistons if you have a dual spring set up but because this is a what I'm going to call a low dollar. This is going to be known as turbo because I'm going to do this as cheap as I can with as many low dollar eBay parts as I can possibly muster or at least convince myself to try to use and try to put down 550 to the wheels. So with that in mind, I have no confidence with pro comp, pro comp engineering Actually, it's called Pro Comp Electronics. But on eBay, they have two sets of valve springs. You can buy either set for $41.50. And yes, that scares the living crap out of me because most any other spring you can buy that's even worth talking about is $140 to $190. But Pro Comp has a single beehive spring that's supposed to be a drop in. On these LS motors, $41.50, same 1.8 installed height, good to a 520 lift, 150 pound seat pressure. Okay, we've talked about in the past, which I'll go ahead and kind of revamp. When you put a valve spring on a boosted motor, turbo or supercharged, the general rule of thumb, and this is not set in stone, this is, you know, 
I'm saying the general rule of thumb is for every one pound of boost you introduce to the back side of your intake valve, you lose two pounds off your seat or your spring's working ability to control that valve. So let's just say a, a normal hydraulic roller engine, say it needs 90 to 110 pounds of seat pressure and it runs fine. Well, when you start putting, cause I'm hoping to not go over maybe 12 pounds of boost, who knows, but 10, 12 pounds of boost, well, you've just knocked, tw you know, 20, 20 to 24 pounds off your seat pressure. Well, I like to run a little bit stronger spring so I have good valve control with RPM. I would assume even with the LQ4 six liter cam in this 4.8 that this thing will shift. It's gonna peak and shift by 6,000 RPMs. I'm just guesstimating, looking at dyno graphs and different cams and different profiles and all that junk. But I would assume that an LQ4 cam in a 4.8 would peak and shift by 6,000 RPMs, but I wanna have absolute control over my valve train at boost. Now, I have searched the internet and been very unsuccessful in trying to track down a set of Gen 4 pistons and rods for this motor. Apparently, you can get them halfway available for the 5.3 motors but for some reason the longer rod 4.8 gen 4 stuff is kind of hard to find if during this build i can get my hands on a set of them big fat gen 4 rods and floating pistons this motor will get them because i wanted to put 600 plus to the wheels but i will not push a gen 3 rod that hard because i've seen too many people online with them S-shaped bent rods or worse. So, um, basically it's gonna be fed by a 69 millimeter 50 trim. I don't even know the brand of the turbo. We'll make a different video on that. But I have two of those left over from when I was building my uh, twin turbo big block. And I've decided to just run one of those on LS because I want fuel injection. Tired of messing with carburetors for performance. But uh, we'll go into more detail on those in a different video so I can kind of show you what brand they are and all that. But originally when they were purchased, they were supposed to be 76 millimeter eBay turbos. But after I pulled them apart and started measuring everything, they were actually 69 millimeters. So, but I'm not deterred. I think that 69 millimeter has a lot of potential with the uh, I can't remember if it's a 96 or one. Of, I think it's a 96 AR housing, but or exhaust housing. So anyway, different video, different time. But I just wanted to give you guys an update that I was kind of digging into this LS motor, kind of making some plans, buying some parts, uh, building. And like I said, this is going to be a low dollar. We're going to refer to to this motor as turbo because we're going to try to do it as uh, economically. I think economically sounds a little bit better than cheap, but I'm going to try to get deals on parts. I'm not afraid to buy off eBay, you know, buy off brands, you know, certain parts I don't buy used because, you know, it's just dumb. So basically looking at 550 to the wheels, more if I can get a better set of rods and floating pistons, but at this point it doesn't look like it's going to be in the budget because you know you basically have to buy a gen 4 engine to get those parts but if i was going to do that i would just run the gen the whole gen 4 long block so anyway it's going to have reversed truck manifolds i may or may not cut and modify those ends you know because there's tons of videos on that uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but i just wanted you to see my core 110,018 mile 4.8 truck engine. I am going to run the truck intake, uh, cable, th uh, throttle body. I'm not doing no drive by wire junk. And uh, hopefully it's going to work out good. So we're going to do a 
small factory cam upgrade, valve springs, probably rod bolts, and uh, get this thing put together and see if we can make some power. So, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I wanted to get a little video put up before we went to basketball practice. So here we are on the on the LS. Wish me luck.